Hello. Just getting fired up, just getting started here. You can probably guess I'm, I'm going to talk about some, like, skull stuff today. Because I was kind of, I was sitting around, and I was just kind of thinking, and I was like, I don't do a lot of work on faces. I do a bunch of work on hands, and I do a bunch of work on chests and arms and hands and feet and bodies. I don't do a lot of work on faces. And, uh, and because I don't do a lot of work on faces, I'm not very good at them. What the hell is going on with my autofocus? It's being garbage. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing that I frequently run into issues with, is uh, I'm not very good at faces. So, let's, um, let's work a little bit around that. And one of the things that I want to kind of cover here zip over here and make sure we've had a uh, appropriate I've been kind of messing around with my messing around with my interface a little bit so let's go with something in a kind of a hot pink range right up here okay so what we're looking at here is a skull has a face stretched over it, and that face is just skin, okay? It's just skin stretched over, and that skin is stretched over the face in a particular way. But one of the important things that I really want to point out here is there's a substantial amount of skin and muscle back here behind the spine. There's a whole bunch of it. There's like more than you typically expect. The spine does kind of slope around like this, and you can think of it sloping around like this, but that's not actually the spine. The spine is deep in here, whereas the, uh, you've got this area here that is taken up by muscle and skin. And uh, more to the point, here, right underneath of the, uh, you got your tongue in your mouth right here, okay? And that tongue comes down, and there's your throat. And we've got this, uh, we've got this soft palate under here that's underneath of your tongue and whatnot. But here is your, here's your spine, and here's your throat right here that sits inside of that. And your spine kind of protects all of that. So what you've got is this sort of situation where here's the front of your face. You've got the spine underneath the skull, but you've, but you've, um, that spine is sitting a little farther forward than you typically think, and that throat is sitting a little farther back, and there is kind of your neck, there's your back right there, and here you have your collarbones. So this is kind of the, uh, the structure of your neck right there. And you can think of this, you can think of the human body as having like this diamond cross section from the top with the throat kind of tunneling down into the middle. And then your back sits behind that and your chest sits in front of that. And you've got kind of well, I don't want to get too much into torso stuff. Anyway, I wanted to look at this in terms of uh, in terms of an actual X-ray, so you can see we're talking about real anatomy. We're not talking about just like shit we made up. Oh, here's the stylized thing, and here's how that looks. No, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is real anatomy, and then we're going to go from that, and we're going to talk more about the skull. Now, we're all kind of sort of familiar with the. Uh, with the Loomis method. So, um, 
when I say we're kind of sort of familiar with it, I mean, we all know that you start with this circle that kind of encompasses the cranium right there. Now, I tend to think in terms of more, there's a circle here that encompasses the cranium, and then sitting in the front of that, there's kind of this sloping barrel that hangs off the front. So I think about it a little like this, okay? And because I think of it a little like this, when we're talking about a ball like that, we look at that from the front, and instead of having this big, wide ball that you got to chop the sides off of, if you got it like this, and then there's a barrel sticking off the front of it, that doesn't need to have the sides chopped off because it's just smaller. But that is just me. That is just me and the way I think about it. But one of the things that you notice here is that we've got some structures. that are kind of important. Now here we have the beginning of the nose. And that nose is going to have some skin wrapped around it, and that skin is going to have some fleshy structures. And here we have the lips and all of that. We're going to have the actual flesh of the nose there. And then your skin wraps up around this. It wraps down here, and there is, again, a shocking amount of muscle and skin back here. So here's your spine coming down, like so. And here's your throat coming down, like so but we've got a fair amount of skin back here. Let's uh, pull that back a bit. We don't want to be... We don't want to be quite that prominent with the nose. We're going to come down here is kind of the cartilage of the nose. And then the lips are fairly prominent. They stick out a fair degree. And then the nose kind of sits right there. Now, one of the important things that I've been noticing here is you can kind of think of this as a box. that sits on the inside there. And we've got the brow ridge right here. Actually, I think we can actually take that up to the top of the brow ridge. And then we just sort of carve out that space. And what we need to remember is when we're looking at the nose, okay, Here's the kind of space that the nose occupies, and there's bone here. This is bone. But then we've got cartilage that comes down here, and it's just a narrow strip of cartilage, okay? Other than that cartilage, all we have is skin, and that skin stretches around. So if you have a fairly shallow nose, then that skin stretches and is fairly shallow again, because here's the nose and here's the cartilage. And if the cheekbones are here, then the skin stretches around the nose like this. And it's fairly broad and it's fairly smooth. Whereas if your cheekbones are farther back, like so, now you get more of a sweeping curve that comes back around. 
same over here is it kind of scoops in there and in this space right here in this space between the skull and the cartilage there we get this sort of barrel shape we get this little curved bit on the outside of the nose because you've got these you've got these channels you've got your uh, you've got your nostril that sits there And then here you have the side of the nose right here. And this space right here, that's a channel that runs up alongside that cartilage. And this ball of your nose right here is actually divided in two. So it kind of has this end of a bone shape to it. You can feel that if you put your finger on your nose and you just kind of do like this. You just wheel your fingers back and forth. You can feel the two halves sliding back and forth against each other. And then that's kind of the area where the nostril forms. So you kind of get this. You kind of get this basic shape here, just like you have with the neck. You've got the back, the neck, collarbone right there. With the nose, you kind of have nostril, nostril. You got the end of the nose, and then you got the edges of the nostrils there. And that kind of creates this fundamental shape of the nose, which comes up. And that shades, if you look at how the, um, if you look at how the skull is structured, okay, because the skull is structured the way it is, the side of the nose here shades straight up it just follows the line across into the brow ridge. So that kind of follows along like so. So you've got that central line of the nose that goes into the line of the eye. And that's kind of when you think of a, uh, when you think of a kind of Spartan helmet, it's that basic kind of structure or Magneto's helmet. It's the same basic idea, but that comes up and it goes into the form of the eye. And with the eye, remember, you've got an actual eyeball that's sitting in there. So because you've got an eyeball that's in there, you have skin that's stretched over the brow, but then you've got skin that stretches over the eye, and that skin is divided and it opens up in both directions. And then here you've got uh, both the brow ridge up top and the cheekbone down at the bottom here. Those kind of limit where the eyelid can go. You got this sort of shape and the shape of the eye is sort of oblong. And it's kind of long on the inside top and the outside bottom, like so. So here's sort of your nose area, right there. And here's your cheekbone area. And your cheekbone kind of forms a little triangle here. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm not being like an expert on this or anything. It's not like I am particularly great at drawing faces or indeed any good at all at drawing faces, but I sure have read a lot of the anatomy. So here's kind of the eyeball. And the thing is, the eyeball, your bottom lid, sits here, 
and your top lid sits here and it wraps around that bottom eyelid okay it wraps around the bottom of the eyelid there so your bottom eyelid kind of stops here but your top eyelid keeps going and then there's typically a fold here because here's your brow ridge right here and there's typically a fold where the eyelid hits the brow ridge and kind of folds in half and um, I'm out of coffee I'll drink water and the eyelid kind of folds in half there and then you've got the uh, then you've got the eyebrow is kind of on the eyebrow ridge and follows along there and then you've got the eyelashes down here and uh generally speaking you don't want to draw individual eyelids or eyelashes you want to draw the eyelashes as a mass and just kind of have some little bits poking out but you don't want to get uh you don't want to go crazy you don't want to try to do like every individual eyelash going around the eye you want to do a kind of swoop and um there are a couple of different ways they do this you want a kind of a point at the outside edge but uh, how much of a point depends and if you're doing a really big kind of anime eye then you'll extend that downward a fair bit but you kind of want to on this outside edge here you want to come out into a kind of point and then you want to swoop down and up and around. I'm not great at drawing eyes. Just ignore me talking about eyes. But um, okay, some other things here. Let's uh, let's turn on this layer here the only part of the skull that moves is the mandible okay this bit right here that moves and it pivots here right under your ear that's where your ear would be right there and your mandible pivots on that area which means that when your mouth opens it doesn't just open down it hinges it hinges open and it drops down and back it doesn't just come straight down to here it's down and back And you have that uh, you have that hinging action there. So when you look at it that way, your mouth is going to be opening like this. It's not going to be opening like this. That's not the way mouths open. <laughs> they do not. Um, your mouth does not open like this. You've got a cheek here. It stretches. You've got a hole where your teeth are right here. But 
the cheek stretches right over this area. So you may have your lip pulled back over your teeth here and down here. But it's still going to open like this. And you're going to have that kind of stretched lip there. You're not going to have a, uh, you're not going to have this Muppet thing going on. That's not how it works. Um, I feel like, so we start off and then we go, okay, here's kind of the brow ridge. Here's where the nose is. And this would be our sort of. This is where the eye socket is, and here we have cheekbone. And then over here we would have another eye socket. And over here we'd have another cheekbone. And because the cheekbone is sticking out, it's going to stick out farther than the brow ridge here. And the brow ridge is going to slope kind of back into the ridge of the cranium there. The cranium goes back farther than most people think it does. And then from here, we've got we got the lower jaw. And back here, we've got this spine along the back of the jaw right there. This is the uh, temporomandibular joint right there. It sits under the temporal plate of the skull, or below the temporal plate of the skull. It's not like inside the skull. Or So we've got kind of this structure for everything. And working from that, we have an eyeball that sits in here and an eyeball that sits in here. And we've got the cartilage of the nose is going to come out about like that. Okay. And working from this, we've just got a little bit of... So we've got to think in terms of this is stretched skin over the face. If we come over here to the construction layer, let me work on a slightly larger brush here. And um, move this over top of the notes. So here's the ear here. The brow ridge is going to tell us where the eyebrows go. Let's kind of get that in there. Pull that around here. We've got a, uh, a cheekbone right there. 
The cheekbone kind of forms this uh, little triangle thing that comes down here. And I've got something. If I turn off the notes, we've got uh, we've got something approaching a face. Not bad. Seems to have most of the stuff in the right places. Just a question of cleaning stuff up. You see here we've got the uh, trace the side of the nose, and there's sort of the end of it there. If he had a mustache, it'd be right here. There's that cheekbone there. It's not bad. So if if we were to open this guy's mouth, we would make that mouth. We would make the mouth opening there. And then we would want we'd want the jaw to come down here, and we want the, the chin to be right about there. So we keep kind of the chin in the same location relative to the bottom lip, and then we could do like. Some exposed teeth, and the tongue, and we might want to drag the eyebrows down lower. Similarly over here. Drag the eyebrows lower. Let the brow o'erwhelm it as fearfully as doth a gallad rock, or whelm and jutty his confounded base. This kind of Add some wrinkles in there. It's not um, not bad. Just kind of it's just kind of thinking about where everything goes helps. But um, it seems like okay. It seems like we can simplify somewhat. Here's kind of the lip. Here's the bottom lip. And we've got the eyes in there. Then we can connect that and connect those. Kind of. Thinking in terms of simplification here, that looks awful. Let's let's pretend that didn't happen. There we go. Let's pretend that never happened at all. Let's uh, let's add. At his neck, 
I have a tendency to uh to underrepresent the size and shape of the neck. Um this guy would probably be raising his arm. So if he's raising his arm, then number one, his collarbone is going to come up like so. Number two, the shoulder is going to be like that. The chest, the pectoralis muscle is going to come up and stretch like so. You have here the axilla. There would be there would be the forearm, and that would be extending upward like so. Nope, that right there wouldn't be there. So to kind of have that sort of feel, this would be farther up and farther back. You would undoubtedly be holding some kind of some kind of weapon. Would be accurate. He may have holding his hand up. I don't know. That's not um that's not terrible. It um it gets the message across, but feel like chest should come farther out there. I've made the guy bald for no particular reason. I don't know why I did that. But um, I don't know. That's not terrible. Half an hour seems like a long time to do it, but I need to do more stuff like this. I need to do more actual, like, um, just kind of train of thought studies and look at stuff and go, let's think about this and let's, um, let's make some kind of, uh, let's make some kind of composition just based on, I need to work on this stuff. I don't know. I should, I should do more of that stuff. That's just, that's kind of all I wanted to get at. Um, I don't know what else to say at this point. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's me thinking about faces and thinking about stuff and... Um, That's not accurate. This head here, this. This bit right here, this guy. This needs to. It's 
guy needs to move farther this way, I think. Yeah. My head would be tilted more upward, I think. I was looking too far down. Where does this belong? It belongs higher up, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It belongs more... I have once again... underrepresented the neck. That's a much more accurate position. Let's deselect and uh, Kind of the the chin goes like directly over the Adam's apple in almost every case. So while I'm not directly drawing an Adam's apple, I'm thinking about where it would be located. And of course, we need uh, all of that. That looks. Um, that looks substantially better. Still not happy with it. There's a lot more stuff I could fix in here. But I don't feel like it. Um, yeah, so. I, yeah, do the little YouTube dance. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that happy horse shit. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, uh, okay, bye. That was my mouse. There it is.